Hi. So today's topic for environment related films part by discussion will be based on electrified flex fuel vehicles, the Bharat emission standards that we have and also we will look into topics such as biofuels and the national biofuel policy. So before getting into what is an electrified flex fuel, we will just make sure what is a flex fuel vehicle. Uh, we, are, we all know that uh, in recent times conventionally, it, conventionally we use petrol and diesel for running our engines like be it a car or a bicycle or motorcycle, we use uh, petrol and diesels. But in recent times owing to the eco ecological sustainability and ecological degradation caused by all these fossil fuels, we are transitioning into uh, flexible fuels. Flexible fuels in the sense we are inculcating natural fuels that is biofuels into our fossil fuel mixture. That is what we have this programs called as ethanol blending programs and all right. We are just mixing ethanol that is a biofuel into this fossil fuel called as petrol or diesel. So the engines or the vehicles that run on blended uh, fuels that is flexible fuels that those vehicles are called as flex fuel vehicles or flex fuel engines. So what is an electrified flex fuel engine? An engine, a car or vehicle that can run on flexible fuels but also has an electrified power train is called as an electrified flex fuel vehicle. It can run on uh, flexible fuels and it can also run on electricity. That is like an, it acts as an EV and also it acts as a, a flexible fuel vehicle or flexible fuel engine. So this is what an electrified uh, flex fuel vehicle is and recently Toyota has unveiled the first world first prototype of EBP5 that is ethanol blended petrol 5 85 percentage of ethanol is being blended with 15 percentage of gasoline in order to run that flexible fuel vehicle that was unveiled by uh, Toyota. So that is what flex fuel vehicles are. Now we will move on to the Bharat standards. What are these Bharat standards? Any of you will have come across these terms such as uh, BS4 vehicle, BS6 vehicle, BS321 uh, and all the like earlier uh, periods and all we would have come across all these uh, terminologies. But uh, yes, we will have not come across this term called as BS5. Now what are these BS? These are nothing but emission standards. How much a vehicle or how much does an engine emit? Emit like all we have all these pollutants like uh, nitrogen oxides, we have sulfur oxides, we have particulate matter PM2.5 and PM10 uh, depending on the size. And there are different types of pollutants that come out from these engines, from the working of these engines. And these standards, these Bharat emission standards, they try to gradually reduce, gradually reduce all these emissions. These are nothing but regulatory standards that are mimicked upon the European emission standards. We have copied, well, not copied, but yes, we have uh, learned from the European emission standards and we have inculcated those uh, programs and policies into our own emission standards. But a small catch here is that there is a five year lag, five year time lag between the European standards and the Bharat standards that we use today. So BS standards were first initially introduced in the year 2000 and then it has uh, come a long way. Now we are in the BS6 stage. Initially in BS6 was introduced in 2020 but there was a plan to introduce BS5 in 2019 itself but owing to the international good practices that other countries have been following like uh, other countries like they did a lot. They were in the BS6 stage when India was in the BS4 stage itself. So what we did was we leapfrogged, we jumped one stage. We did not go to the BS5 stage and straight away we jumped into the BS6 stage from the BS4 stage owing to the good beneficial things for the environment that the BS6 th BS, uh, can do. So this is what the Bharat emission standards is and one point to be noted is that the 5 year time lag and we have, uh, we have uh, we have been inspired by the European emission standards in order to bring the Bharat emission standards also. So today in BS6 in comparison with BS4 there are a lot of benefits to the BS6 fuels and BS6 engines. If you take for example uh, BS4 engines they used to emit around 50 parts per milli ppm parts per million of uh, sulfur oxides but in uh, BS6 it is only 10 ppm. Around 80% reduction has been achieved with respect to sulfur uh, emissions and NOx emissions 70% has been reduced and for example we talked about this particulate matter 2.5 and 10 that can cause large scale respiratory issues also. Uh, these PM2.5 and PM10 what they did what happened was in uh, BS4 120 micrograms of uh, particulate matter especially PM2.5 was released. On the other hand only 70 to 80 micrograms are being released here in uh, BA6. So it has a lot of environmental benefits. It is not enough but in comparison or in relation with BS4, BS6 is, is better. So these are, this is what the Bharat emission standards are. 
and uh, this is how the BS6 is going on. In uh, April uh, 1st of uh, 2020, it was uh, launched, and from then on, we have been following this BS6 and BS6 fuels. So, yes, now we'll transition into biofuels. So, what are biofuels? We have come across these terms biofuels in the preparation, in our preparation. Biofuels are nothing but fuels that are being produced by organic matter or biomass. So, that's as simple as that fuels that are being produced from organic matter or uh, like green green matter so that is what biofuels are so biofuels they comes in where they come in various uh, shapes and sizes we have ethanol we have uh, biodiesel we have biopetrol we have biogas bins and all there are various shapes and sizes in which biofuels can come uh, but uh, if you if you have to classify biofuels based on what is being used to produce these biofuels we have four types of classifications that is the first generation second generation third and the fourth generation of biofuels the first generation of biofuels are very easy, uh, easy to understand like food crops are being used to produce this particular first generation biofuels. For example, be it rice, be it wheat, be it sugar cane, all these things, no, like these are all feedstocks. This can be uh, consumed by individuals, this, this can be consumed by uh, humans. So when food crops or food stocks are being used to produce a particular type of biofuel, those biofuels are called as first generation biofuels. But uh, this first generation biofuels initially it had a lot of furor, but recent times it has uh, its policies has been a question mark. Why? Because it can hamper food security. The state of food security across the globe we all know that it is a it is in a very uh, dire state. So in, if you concentrate, if you take these food sources and concentrate into producing biofuels, the state of food security across the globe will further deteriorate. So that is one of the major reasons why first generation biofuels have been criticized. So moving on to the second generation biofuels that is also known as the advanced biofuels. These biofuels use the non-food parts of the crops or non-food crops. For example, grasses are being used in order to produce uh, second generation biofuels. Uh, for example, the stems, the leaves of food crops can be used like broken wheat and all these things that cannot be consumed. All this food stuff that cannot be consumed are being used in order to produce the advanced biofuels or the second generation biofuels. This is what the second generation biofuels are. And moving on to the third generation, third generation are nothing but biofuels that are produced by algae. Biofuels that are produced by algae are called as third generation biofuels. And with respect to the fourth generation biofuels that most people or most sources do not cover, it comes with genetically modified organisms, specifically targeted only to increase the biomass. The major goal of this genetical modification is to increase the biomass and increase in biomass leads to an increase in the biofuel production. So that is what fourth generation biofuels are. These are the basic types of uh, biofuels depending on the feedstock that is being fed in the production process of biofuels. Now we will move on to the concept of national biofuel policy. Uh, yes, initially, initially we all know that the national biofuel policy was unveiled by the Ministry of Petroleum in the year 2018 but initially itself initially itself before that uh, almost a decade before around 2008 or 2009 there was another similar policy there was another similar policy unveiled by the ministry of new and renewable energies but what happened was in 2009 yes we all know 2008 there was this very big financial crisis going on across the globe and yes even though india was not affected a lot the crude prices and all it, it shot up inflation had its uh, inflationary clouds were like hovering around the entire world economy and uh, India is also no exception. India also being a net importer of crude oil had all these apprehensions with respect to rising crude oil prices and rising import bill. So now to address these issues of import bill uh, increases, what we did was we focused on alternative fuels such as biofuels. So in 2009 itself we unveiled a policy called as the national biofuel policy and this is not the first time, 2018 is not the first time that a policy has been introduced. So this is one point to be remembered and um, initially it was unveiled by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy but today it is being unveiled by the Ministry of uh, like Ministry of Petroleum right yes uh, now what is the objective what is the objective of this new policy what does it try to do one thing that it tries to do is that it tries to increase ethanol blending ethanol blending in the sense we have petroleum and we have diesel we try to mix the ethanol, the biofuel that we get from sugar cane and all other stuff with the fossil fuels, with the fossil fuels. So yes, in petrol we have a goal of uh, mixing 20% ethanol, ethanol with 80% of petrol and using it for our fuels. This is one goal and with respect to diesel, we have uh, this target of mixing 5% of diesel, sorry, yes, 5% of ethanol with the remaining percentage of diesel. So these are the two goals that are 
two primary objectives two prime two objectives that has to be achieved uh, that we are on the way to achieve it also and the next thing is that of the primary objective uh, primary the another primary objective is to have a sufficient and uh, consistent feed for all these uh, biofuel producing industries all these biofuel industries to have a consistent uh, supply of feedstock for these biofuel uh, producing industries and the third point to be noted is that to increase uh, farmers income to increase farmers income for example all these feedstocks that go as waste can be collected by the uh, for example the two second generation feedstocks and all they can be collected by the farmer and can be sold to some other person who pays the farmer a very good sum very good sum for the feedstock that he has given to the biofuel industry so that is what that is how the that is the third objective of this particular uh, mechanism also this particular policy and there are a lot of other policies you know like uh, to improve employment generation to improve economic activity these are all there but yes these are the three primary objectives ethanol blending with uh, petrol and diesel to have a consistent supply of feedstock for uh, biofuel production and also to double to increase the income of farmers and also employment generation three major objectives and this policy also lists this policy also lists uh, various uh, components various components such as what can be used what are the feedstocks that can be used in order to produce biofuels we'll just uh, we'll see a few uh, concepts or we will see a few uh, things feedstocks that can be used for example rice can be used uh, cassava tapioca right tapioca can be used uh, rice wheat can be used uh, sweet potato sorry rotten potatoes rotten potatoes broken grains broken grains you know, like when processing all some grains they get uh, they break and these broken grains can be used as feedstock uh, sugar canes sugar beets sugar cane juice can be used sorghum corn maize corn maize yes uh, all these things can be used in order to produce biofuels so this is what the national biofuel policy entails and one point to be noted is that in 2022 a, a small change was made with respect to the objectives of this program so initially what happened was initially the target of achieving ethanol blending 25% sorry 20% and 5% in petrol and diesel respectively was set a target of 2030 so what this 2022 amendment did was in 2025 itself we'll have to achieve this blending objective so this is what the 2022 amendment did to the policy and now where are we with respect to all these ethanol blending all these ethanol blending Yes, this as this is this ethanol blending program a success or not? We have achieved in 2021. That is ESY. We call this term as ESY. That is ethanol supply year. Ethanol supply year 2021 to 22. In that itself, we achieved the 10% uh, target. EBP 10 was achieved. Ethanol blending program 10% was achieved in the year ESY. One point to be noted is this year ethanol supply year, not a normal year or a financial year. Ethanol supply year is a year that starts from December of first year. And goes to the November of the next year. For example, it starts in the December of 2021 and goes to the goes until the November of 2022. This is what an ethanol supply year means. So in that year itself, we achieve 2021-2022 ESY itself. We achieve the 10% blending program, and we are also on the way to achieve this 20% achieve 20% uh, program in ESY 2025. So that is how the program is.